my name is Fran Arsenal. I'm, I'm a member of the Acton Select Board. I'm assigned to Article 13, Amend Zoning Bylaw and Zoning Map, South Acton Village District. I'm sitting with Catherine Yusoff, Chair of the Economic Development Committee, and also a member of the South Acton Vision and Action Plan Advisory Group. Over the past two years, the Acton community has been working to explore how it can comply with the new MBTA Communities Law and update its 1995 South Acton Village Plan. Article 13 addresses goals of the South Acton Vision and Action Plan by proposing zoning changes in the South Acton Village Core. The overall goal of the changes is to incentivize village scale commercial uses and mixed use structures that are realistically achievable and that support the desired aspects of safety, walkability, diversity, and historic preservation. In the summer of 2022, Acton started the community engagement effort with a town-wide survey that went out to all residential mailing addresses, including homeowners and renters. The town-wide survey was then followed up with an in-person workshop to share the results of the survey, existing conditions, and to collect additional feedback. When evaluating existing conditions, it was clear that what exists today in South Acton Village does not match the desired vision of the community. Desired uses like restaurants, coffee shops, retail, and art galleries are almost non-existent in the existing village. Only single family is allowed by right and very limited amount of multifamily is allowed through special permits. Streetscape, and walkability is also lacking. In order to align the vision with the zoning, the proposal separates out the existing South Acton Village District into two areas, SAV1 and SAV2. SAV1 is shown in purple. The historic district overlaps this area and is outlined in black. Zoning proposals in this area are more sensitive to the development patterns in the historic district. SAV2 would include stronger incentives to encourage commercial users that are desired and considers its direct proximity to the MBTA station. SAV1 the area shown in purple on the map includes three properties on Main Street that are located in the historic district and runs along a portion of School Street and River Street. The recommended zoning changes in this area would change the minimum and maximum front setbacks to mirror that of West Acton. It would allow for a maximum of three stories where two and a half stories are allowed today. It would also allow for additional floor area if commercial use is on the ground floor fronting the street. Parking standards would also be modified to set a minimum of one parking space per residential unit and a maximum parking standard would be set for all commercial uses except for restaurants, retail, or commercial recreation in order to reduce barriers for these desired uses. The proposal would allow for parallel parking in front of buildings to mimic the on-street parking we have in West Acton Village. The zoning changes would prohibit manufacturing and building trade shops such as landscaping businesses, and allow for more than four dwelling units in a multifamily structure by right and allow dwelling conversion by right with no owner occupancy requirement. Design guidelines for the South Acton Historic District 
would continue to be regulated by the Historic District Commission. SAV2, the area shown in pink on the map, encourages more commercial development by allowing additional floor area and height to compensate for the requirement to have commercial space on the ground floor facing the street. The maximum height in SAV2 would be three and a half stories. There would be no maximum floor area ratio, rather letting the dimensional regulations be the self-limiting factor to allow for more creativity in design and the ability to accommodate the required ground floor commercial space. Parking and use regulations would be the same across the two districts. Specific design standards would be set. For example, a recess in the building facade after the second floor, architectural variations in the facade of the building facing the street, and street trees and landscaping. Together with the MBTA community zoning proposal the SAV zoning proposal aims to guide future development toward the vision that was first articulated in the 1995 South Acton Village Plan and added to and reinforced by the community feedback during this current planning process. Thank you, Catherine. I have a few follow-up questions about the proposed zoning article. The South Acton Vision and Action Plan has several goals and action items. How does the pro proposed zoning help achieve the community's vision for the area? The proposed zoning is one tool that can be used to help unlock current barriers and apply regulations that guide mixed use and village scale development. There are several other action items in, identified in the plan. For example, the plan calls out adopting specific design guidelines for the South Acton Historic District and to study options for expansion of Acton's sewer supply system to better accommodate desired commercial uses. Zoning is just the first step to realizing the community's vision expressed through the outreach process, but other steps will also be required. Mm -hmm. The South Acton Vision and Action Plan looked comprehensively at updating the 1995 South Acton Area Plan while looking at how Acton could comply with the MBTA community law. Is the proposed South Acton Village District zoning the same as the MBT, MBTA zoning? No, they are two separate zoning articles which will be voted on separately. But in terms of a comprehensive planning process, they do complement each other. The South Acton Village District zoning proposal changes the base district to encourage more commercial development and mixed use options, where the MBTA overlay district is primarily a residential overlay that allows multifamily. So how do the two zoning articles relate to each other? Businesses need patrons and people want places to go allowing for increased options for multifamily in walking distance to restaurants and shops is intended to create the opportunity for small businesses to thrive and succeed. Economic viability relies on a customer base and the two districts interplay in this way. Both efforts together support the goals of the Climate Action Plan. And the 1995 plan did, did not seem to achieve the desired goals and commercial uses that the community desired. What is different this time around? As part of the outreach effort, we heard from business owners and mixed use developers on the barriers they currently experience. One of the key features of the proposed zoning is requiring commercial uses on the ground floor. The zoning that came out of the 1995 plan does not include this requirement. Related to this is an allowance for increased height to make sure that the ground floor commercial requirement is feasible given the limited land area in the village district. This allows for residential uses on the top floors. The current proposal also reduces restrictions on parking, which is an issue in the district today. 
Part of the South Acton Village Zoning District is in the historic district. Does this mean that existing historic homes will have to incorporate commercial on the ground floor? No, the zoning only applies to new development. The South Acton Village District 1 is located in most of the historic district. In this area, commercial is only required on the ground floor when the amount of building area exceeds a th certain th threshold. Commercial is required on the ground floor for all new development in the proposed South Acton Village 2 district, which is entirely mm -hmm. outside of the mm -hmm. historic district. Thank you. Exchange Hall and Jones Tavern are important resources in South Acton Village. Did the zoning take that into account? As such prominent and unique features of South Acton, the relationship between the proposed zoning dimensions and these historic buildings were discussed at length with the chair of the, the Historic District Commission, the Design Review Board, and the advisory group. For example, heights were set to ensure that Exchange Hall remains the tallest focal point of the area and that there is a transition zone around Jones Tavern. Mm -hmm. How will this affect traffic and improve the pedestrian experience? There are pedestrian and traffic calming features in the proposed zoning article that require new development to incorporate sidewalks, street trees, and allows for on-street parking on the property to buffer for pedestrians and calm traffic. The DPW, Department of Public Works, is also embarking on a complete street study that will incorporate the proposed zoning. The select board unanimously recommended this article, and I personally hope this helps us achieve the vision the residents have expressed for, for this area. I would like to end by reading the vision statement for South Acton that was established through the community planning process. In the future, South Acton Village is a thriving, transit-oriented neighborhood that is welcoming to people of all ages and income levels. The Village Center has retained its historic small-town charm while expanding its diversity of housing and business offerings. With its convenient commuter rail access and location as a connector village between Kelly's Corner, West Acton, and downtown Maynard, South Acton draws in visitors to shop dine, admire the many historic features, and visit recreational facilities such as the Assabet River Rail Trail and Great Hill. It is safe and easy to travel within South Acton and from South Acton to other parts of town, not matter the mode of transportation. Thank you, and thank you, Catherine.